this is a 1975 Ford Courier pickup bed trailer. All right, so now I'm going to start some preliminary fitment of the new trailer axle for the Adventure Trailer Roo. Now, the hub bore on the axle is kind of a standard trailer size. It's like a 2.45 inch hub bore, which is this size right here. On the Rubicon wheels, it is actually a little bit smaller because on the Jeep they, you know, kind of run flat face with a little bit of a hub lip. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a hole saw and I'm going to take this tiny little lip out right there, just like that. That's going to be two and a half inches. And because they are a coned uh, lug nut, it's going to be centered by the lug nuts and not by, it's not going to be hub centric, but it'll be centered by the lug nuts with um, with the coned lug nuts. So one of the reasons I wanted to go with the Rubicon wheels is that way I've got extra spares for the Jeep. I'll have three of these wheels with a pretty similar size tire to what I'm running on the Jeep, enough to limp out of any situation, but also because of the offset. You can see where the hub face is on it. This allowed me to go with an out, walking into stuff with an off the shelf axle and I kind of got it centered, but you can see, if you can look back in there at the tire, the hub face on this is about where the outside of the tire is. So I wanted to run with the factory wheel so it would have the tire drawn in a little bit. It wouldn't be like a wide offset. So yeah, this is the plan. I mean, eventually I'll probably put some TJ flares on this, but we've got a little bit of lift with the axle. We've got the factory wheels, and now I'm going to bore them out a little bit and see what I can do there. All right, got my trusty hole saw. Let's see what we can do. I did a few rounds just to kind of make sure the hole was the right size. And let's get through this. I have to swap the battery out here. heavy duty for the cordless drill so I switched to the corded one a little more horsepower out of it we're almost through Okay, so I'm through, I'm trying to see, I mean, it looks like we are pretty concentric all the way around, but I'm gonna go ahead and fit it on. As you can see, it got away from me a couple times. I'm not too worried about it. I'll touch it up with some silver paint, uh, but let's see how it fits. All right, so, luckily I don't get too much in your way here. There we go. Right up against the hub face. There's actually a little bit of room. So with these uh, curved in uh, concave, I guess, uh, lug surfaces, uh, we'll be able to put the lug nuts on and we'll be just fine. So now we have the back spacing on the factory wheel puts it really close to the hub face. So it's gonna tuck under a little bit more. So we have, the, like I said, we have an off the shelf axle um, that we can run a factory wheel on with the factory back spacing. So, Nice, good width on the axle, 3,500 pound capacity, and it's not gonna stick out super wide on my old 1975 truck bed trailer. So, all right, on to the next one. All right, got my U-bolts in place. So that's gonna work well. So we've got the two and three eighths diameter there on the axle, and then we've got a two and a quarter inch spring pack underneath. The, the next thing I'm going to have to figure out, once I, once I get this put together, I'll figure it out, is going to be attaching shock absorbers. Now, I don't know if you can see, oops, sorry about my finger, but that shock mount is completely broken off. 
So when we were up, up around Crown King, and let's see, so was that one. So we were up around Crown King a week or so ago, and we're really surprised at how well it performed off-road. You know, it articulated well, um, absorbed bumps really well, and then got home and realized, wow, we've got two shocks that are just hanging there. So we're going to pull out that u-shaped axle which is going to effectively give about a three inch lift three and a half inch lift i'm going to get that put in uh, so right now i'm going to get i'm going to spray some wd-40 on those old u-bolts so you know we got a little bit of rust on stuff down here so i want to get some wd-40 on these old u-bolts here that way, when I pull them off, they'll come off a little bit easier, hopefully. I don't want to break anything or uh, strip anything. I mean, it doesn't matter. Worst comes to worst, I can, I can take a grinder and I can cut those old U-bolts off because I'm not going to reuse them. Uh, so the new axle is going to go underneath. U-bolts are going to go this way with spring plates on top. So, um, yeah. So that's next. We'll... Uh, Start tearing into this. I'll put this up on jack stands and we'll get this old axle out from underneath it and get the new axle underneath. Good times. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get under there and I'm going to loosen up those uh, nuts on the old U bolts and get that axle ready to come out. And then when it's ready, I'm going to lower this guy down as low as it goes, effectively raising the rear end of the camper. I'm going to put jack stands underneath it and then I should be able to roll out the axle. So. Here we go. All right. What have we got for a socket? Nope. There we go. Hopefully the WD-40 did the trick. And got these guys so they aren't going to be too stubborn. Oh boy, come on, there we go. So I'm going to get these front two off, and then before I do the back two, I will uh, put it on jack stands. So when I finally get all eight of these off, I'll just be able to raise up the front of the trailer, lift it up onto the rear jack stands I'm going to put under there, and roll this out. In theory, I'm sure it's going to be more difficult than that because I didn't think about how the tires are going to clear the wheel wells, but, you know, what could possibly go wrong? There's the first one. Three more to go. WD-40 definitely did the trick. Now these are um, essentially the old version of a nylock bolt or nut. So what these are is they actually have a 
they're a self gripping nut but they're all metal so instead of having the the nylon insert in it here i'll show you they actually have little cuts in the top that are pressed in so once you put them on so you don't need lock washers or anything like that they hold themselves in place that way and well, they work nice and tight doing exactly what they were designed to do you can't All right. see this but here's the axle and like I said this used to be the front end of something so it's actually got old steering gear on it but it's welded into place and it was welded into place after this u-bolt was put on so I can't even get to the to the nuts on it so out with the grinder we're gonna cut that one off all right, here I am underneath the back of the trailer, and I've got the front end dropped way down. Sorry, it's kind of bright out there, and effectively lifted the rear end up. So I'm going to put these two jack stands underneath the frame, and then when I roll up the front end with the adjustable leg there, it'll put the weight on it and take some of the weight off the springs so I can get underneath here and cut off these remaining two U-bolts with the grinder. So. Uh, jack stands are in place. Go jack up the front, prop it up, and get to cutting. All right, as you guys can see, I work in pretty tight quarters here in the garage. Uh, and the reason is I don't want to go outside in the 110 degree heat. So I've got my ceiling fan on in here, and it's pretty nice. And uh, yeah, so we can get pretty tight in there. But hey, got the grinder out, and, and make sure you've got some eye protection and some gloves if you're using the, uh, the cutoff wheel on the grinder, because sparks are going to go everywhere. So um, I'm going to get to cutting on that. I don't know if there's a safe place where I can put the camera to show you, but I'm going to see what I can do and we'll get these last two U-bolts cut off and we'll go from there. Get over here and get this other one, and we are rocking and rolling. Get this guy up all the way, and we're taking all the weight off the axle. There we go. So the springs are loose. A few more cranks, and we'll. Roll the axle out. I think I'm going to end up having to lift up this whole thing to roll this out, or maybe I'll just get one side over here and take the wheel off. I'll get my son out here and we'll just lift up the whole trailer. So, yeah, it's all loose. Let's get the old axle out. My hands were full. I couldn't film this one, but we brought out the high lift, lifted it all the way up rolled the axle out into one piece so now I'm going to drop the high lift uh, we're going to get the axle out and lower it back down <laughs> 